Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the applications and theoretical applications of Benford's Law. Benford's Law is essentially a technique in order to identify whether or not some of your data is actually fraudulent. And it does this by looking at the frequency of the number of digits and the placement of those digits within those numbers. And what I mean by fraudulent type of data, it just represents fake data or replicated data in order to bypass a certain legal system. Benford's Law can be applied to so many different types of industries. We're talking about tax returns, we're talking about credit card transactions, Actions, electoral data related to voting, census data related to populations, is that there's so many more applications that we can use Benford's Law to identify fraudulent data. Now, the coolest part about Benford's Law is that within the U.S. legal system, we can actually use the applications of Benford's Law to prosecute or defend against an accusation within the U.S. legal system. Very cool stuff here. Just note that when you are using Benford's Law and your data does not follow Benford's Law, this indicates that your data has fraudulent data. This is not a 100% certainty type of a guarantee that your data is actually fraudulent. It's just an indication. So do take that into mind. There are certain types of data that actually does not really work with Benford's Law. And we're talking about data that has a lower bound and upper bound, such as height distribution, uh, or if we're working with labeled data, such as social security numbers, license plate numbers, just uh, data that has labels associated with it, and Benford's Law does not work with that type of data. A rule of thumb when working with Benford's Law is that you have more than 1,000 observations in your data set. Benford's Law essentially looks at the frequency distribution of the digits that appear in your data. The notation D on the screen represents the number of digits that the algorithm should look at. Let's use the example of the number 12,345. If we plug in D as 2, Benford's Law will look at the first two digits from the left hand side of the number. In this case, Benford's Law will look at 1, 2, or 12 in its evaluation. This can scale up to however many numbers you have in your entire column, but there exists research steps on what digits to look at and why you should follow these steps. When using Benford's Law, there's actually a few digits that you should actually really take a look at, and there's five overall steps that you want to take a look at when utilizing Benford's Law. First step is to look at the very first leading digit. Second step is to look at the second digit from the left-hand side. The third test is looking at the first two digits. The fourth test is to look at the first three digits. And the last test is to look at the last two digits from the right hand side. Now let's go ahead and break apart these steps and determine why we should even use them. The first digit test is a test on the leading digit of each number in your list of numbers. This is what the distribution of our numbers should mirror when working with the first digit test. This is an overview that tests to see if your data has any obvious anomalies, and this test will only point you in a direction to observe which categories of numbers should have a second look. This is not used to identify a select few targets for additional analysis, but only a category of data that looks off. The second digit test is an additional test to look at the overall distribution of the data you are working with. Similar to the first digit test, the second digit test double checks to see if there's any obvious outliers in your data. The only difference between this method and the first digit test is that the second digit test just looks at the second digit from the left hand side, and the distribution should be rather quite similar to what we see here. The first two digit tests can be used to select an audit sample for testing based on the results of the previous first and second digit tests. You can use the first two digit tests to find a subset of a category of data that is likely to be manipulated. Overall, this can potentially provide you a more efficient and focused sample to take a look at. The first three digit test is focused on a select few audit samples and pinpoints which data to audit. This is a test to determine if numbers are more or less duplicated. If you have data whose number of digits is less than 2, you should remove this observation since it will skew your results. In addition, if your numbers are negative, you should remove those numbers as well. The last two digit tests are used to identify fake and rounded numbers. This test is very useful when figuring out if financial statement figures have been rounded. 
This might pick out patterns not seen in the prior tests. As a very last step that you would want to look at is to look at the p-values that are associated with each of these tests. However, since we are working with real-world data, more often than not, our data set does not actually follow a Benford's law in terms of the p-value sense. So we largely throw away this p-value and we use a MAD value. And MAD, or MAD, stands for Mean Absolute Deviation. And we use this value to determine whether or not our data actually conforms closely, closely to Bedford's law. And we can see this demonstration in R. Let's get into the code. So over here, I already wrote out the Bedford's law uh, equation, where that is essentially you have your log base 10. When you're getting a one, you add that to the digit that's coming on in. Note that this is largely just related to the first leading digit. And so in this case, if we have Benford's Law, we plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And note that if we were to sum up you know, Benford's Law 1 through 9, we are to get 1. The reason why we don't have 0 is because we don't have a 0 leading digit in our numbers. And even if we did have just a 0, we will largely just omit that because it will skew our data. So this is what Benford's Law should look like. And if we were to plot there, the Benford's Law largely follows what that line should look like. All right, so there's a really, really neat package when utilizing Benford's Law, and that is a library over here, Benford Analysis. It pretty much does the exact same thing that I've done earlier, but there's so many additional features that are really cool and very helpful in our overall discovery as to what data might be manipulated. So just load that in. I'll also be loading in just the data set over here that from prior previously, our data is one through nine and it just has the probabilities associated with it. But the most important part is that I have digits within a list, one through nine, and we're gonna be plugging that away to see if it's fabricated, right? In this case, it is, right? Uh, over here, uh, we just have our function, Benford, and then we pass in the digits, uh, the list of our digits, and notice that we're here, number of digits that we want to take a look at. It's gonna be one because we only want to look at the leading digits over here and of course you can increment this two three the last two etc so let's run the trends trends over here and probably the most important part from our output of our benford's object is probably our mad value or mean absolute deviation which is 0 0.059 and this actually translates to a table which i will pop up in the screen over here translates to a table to tell you whether or not it conforms to Benford's Law, if it's acceptable, marginally acceptable, or it just does not conform to Benford's Law. In this case, it is not, which is a good sign, non-conformity. And we can actually take a look at the plots that are provided by this package. Super, super cool, as we can see here. The red line symbolizes if our digits resembles that of Benford's law. And in this case, we clearly see that it does not. Okay, so let's actually work with actual data over here. And over here, I'm actually loading in data, the census data from the Metropolitan website. Over here, let's just load that on in. The data comes from a website from census.gov, program surveys, pop sets, which is population, and then various data sets over here. So I loaded in 20, 2010 to 2019, went to my metropolitan totals, and just got the all data over here. Of course, you can you know play around with the other data sets that they provided over here, and it's really, really neat as to determining whether or not your the data that they have is um, off or pretty accurate. So let's actually take a look. Uh, with the actual data that we are working with over here. Uh, so we're given lots of estimates, population estimates from the ver various um, CBSA codes that we are given over here. It's really, really neat. Uh, number of deaths, number of births. Um, of course, we have the name as to where these metropolitan areas are actually located. So uh, over here, let's actually take a look at the population estimate of 2019. Let's do the first digit test, and of course, everything is positive. And the default is a discrete value, so we don't really need to change that within our overall function. And let's run that, and let's execute BFL underscore one. And over here, um, it's marginally accepted conformity, which is close to what Benford's law should be resembled, which is actually a good sign over here. And this is probably the most important part. Um, this leads into the table where I make sure I pop that up on this screen. This leads to what type of range of values 
is under a specific category. And in this case, it falls under marginally accepted conformity. And the distortion factor, that is just a statistic to, to suggest how many of your observations are overinflated or underinflated. In this case, multiply that by 100, and that is how many percentage points are uh, related to your data are overinflated. In this case, it's 245%, which is a lot. Um, but that's probably the most important part of this particular output. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this resembles. And first test over here, that actually looks pretty good. Um, the red line, as we can see, it largely follows to our distribution of our first digits that we have going on over here. So no obvious outliers appear in our data set. So let's look at the very first two digits. This is going to be a third test uh, in our list from our theoretical portion. But let's do the first two digits and see if there's any outliers that appear here. And it's marginally accepted conformity. So perfectly fine. There's like not really much of an outlier situation that we have going on over here. We can plot that. This is what our data looks like when it is distributed over two digits. And uh, there are, of course, some of our observations that are sticking out. Of course, we can take a look at the 40th uh, digit and or four zero digits for the leading digits and see what's going on over here. But it largely conforms with Benford's law, which is definitely a good sign. And if you want to go more and more in depth, of course, you were to append those values, see if there's any duplication values or maybe even a rounding issue from the last two digits. But in this case, let's just do the very first three. Why not? Uh, first three digits and see if there's any uh, major outliers that appear over here. Ah, So over here, it actually does not conform to Benford's law. And as we zoom that out, actually, no. Uh, and not run it plot there we go yes and if we run that out over here. yeah so it largely just tells us there's a lot of swinging variations but the most obvious potential outlier as we can see here is this particular value and we can just do a frequency of those summations of those digits and see what pops up and we can take a closer look as to what's happening here uh, and this particular digit, I think that's very close to 395 or so. You can take a look at that digit, this digit, that digit, and see what's going on over here. And this just sort of pinpoints um, as to what specific group you should take an additional look at, maybe even audit that particular group, see what's going on there. Uh, but this definitely provides an overview as to what is going on with that data. Uh, and so you can definitely take a look as to what is happening there. And of course you can do the other tasks. You can take a look at the last two digits to see if there's a rounding issue, which probably is actually a huge case uh, to look at when you are working with census type data. But overall, Benford's Law, really cool when utilizing this particular method to potentially find fraudulent type of data and to pinpoint you know, what type of observations are out of the ordinary so make sure you leave a like hit that subscribe button turn on those notification icons on and i hope to see you in my next video thank you so much for watching